In part 2 of this enemy AI in behavior graph series, we will add a range and line of sight detectors to our system so that we can learn how to define custom nodes for our behavior graph. We will be using starter project from part 1, the enemy game object already has range detector and line of sight detectors, let's enable those, and if we enable gizmos in the scene view, we should see some gizmos depicting our detectors. Range detector is shown as a yellow sphere that turns green if the player is in range of the detector. The script is attached to the project, it uses overlap sphere cast to detect all objects in the detection radius and that are assigned to our layer mask, it naively takes the first detected object and returns it, but for our purpose that is good enough. Line of sight detector is a green ray showing only when the player is in range of the range detector and the enemy can see the player so it isn't behind an obstacle. In the script, it takes the potential target detected by the range detector and uses a ray cast and checks if we can see the target or not and it returns the game object or a null value. To use those detectors in our AI, we need to modify our behavior graph, so let's open it up. To use our custom scripts in our graph, we need to right click and instead of add, we are going to select create and we are going to select action. This way we can define a new node. First we need to give it a name, which is basically a name of a script. Let's call it range detector. Let's select category to be action and let's click next. Now we need to describe what we want to do inside this node. Let's call it update range detector and assign target. Now I'm going to type target with capital T because the system will already recognize that we have target variable in our blackboard so it will assign to it a type game object. The rest of the uh, words are assigned as regular text, but obviously we need to provide a range detector parameter to this node. So we can select this drop down for the range detector and we are going to select other and we are going to select mono behavior and we should find here a range detector at the bottom. This is my script that I have created for our project and here we have an error that variable cannot share the same name as the script that we already have. So let's, go, let's add a spacebar in between those and I'm going to just select detector to be of type other and mono behavior and range detector. Now there is no error and we can proceed to create this which will basically create a script for us. A file explorer window will pop up. I'm going to just save the script where my behaviors are. And if everything went well, a new script should appear. At the top, you have the node description that we have defined inside the graph editor. Next, we will have a list of variables that we gave or specified inside the graph. Lastly, we have those three methods on start, on update, and on end. We don't want to use on end or on start, so we are going to delete those, and our logic will reside in on update. Instead of returning status.success, we are going to return detector, so access our variable. To access the detector itself, we need to call dot value and we would check if this is null in on start and we are going to call dot update detector. And this method is what we have defined in our script. It will return a game object based on the overlap sphere cast. So here I'm going to check if this equals to null. And next I can return failure if it does or success if it isn't. Now instead I want to assign the target dot value to be detector.value update detector and I will check for this target.value if this is equal to null and next I will return status failure or status success. The idea is that if we return success we know that we want the graph to continue to the next node which usually would be to chase the player. In case we return failure we know that we want the graph to stay idle or go patrolling. Just save your script and go back to our graph. We now are missing the detector variable, so what we need to do is go to our blackboard and we need to create a new variable and we will again select other, mono behavior and range detector, let's call it new range detector and we are going to just assign it to our node. At this moment to connect it we could just place it in front of everything else and if we drag only the arrow from our sequence, if this fails this uh, whole sequence will stop. Now instead what we can do is delete 
the whole sequence and the uh, arrows by selecting those and if they are in blue we can right click and delete or just press delete and what we can do is define the same sequence by placing those one below each other we can see that we, if we drag a, a node below another node we can stack those together now let's select this one and let's stack it below and the last one will be weight and this way we have created the same sequence but it is much shorter you should already see that we can see the gizmo of our uh, range detector but we need to select our enemy and in its behavior agent we need to assign this new range detector let's just drag the range detector component and assign it here now if we go towards our enemy it should turn the sphere green and the enemy should start chasing us let's try running away from it okay and now we have run away from it but something is wrong if you open the graph and enable debug mode and select the enemy you will see that the on start has run and it is waiting for the other nodes to return now the update range detector new de uh, range detector has returned true which is this check mark next to the self navigate 2 always returns running because it has never caught to our player and that is why if i unpause the game and keep on running this detector has never been updated and it will continue chasing us in despite the fact that we are outside of the range of the range detector let's open our graph and try to fix it so how can we do it well the problem is that the update new range detector is running in the sequence with those other nodes but it should run in parallel now we could connect it to on start and select from branch options run in parallel but we can also just right click add and we can select events and we can create another on start as you recall the graph is invoked from left to right and from top to bottom so if we connect this uh, second on start to our range detector uh, node it will continuously detect our player or it will update the target to be null and now this will also be updated based on this detector so this time if we save the graph and press play we can approach the enemy and it will start chasing us but the moment we run away from the range detector it stands still again because on start that runs update range detector logic has returned false and set the target to be null and the self navigates to from the second branch or the second uh, graph is not able to reach a target that is null we could make this logic more explicitly visible because we have no idea if this will return false or an exception so to stop this graph from invoking those nodes we can right click add and we can select flow and abort and abort node now this abort node allows us let's delete this on start connection pressing delete and let's connect this to the abort if and let's connect this to our basically chase logic and now if we select this abort if we can assign a condition to it so in the inspector let's assign a condition we're going to check variable conditions and variable value changed now this condition was added to our graph and we can select our target from the blackboard let's assign it here so if the target is changed so it has changed its value from game object to, to null this branch will be aborted and this uh, self navigates to will never run it will just finish running because this abort if overrides its behavior that's why we call those violet nodes flow nodes because they control the flow of our graph and can override the behavior of other nodes before we test again this logic basically it will run the same way we can add to our blackboard a new variable using this plus icon other mono behavior and we have this line of sight detector so let's add this i'm going to leave the name as is to use it in our graph i'm going to right click add and let's select flow and we have conditional and we have a conditional branch so basically an if statement so i'm going to connect the update range the new detector range to this branch on and again we can select this branch on no condition assigned and in the inspector we can assign a condition obviously we won't run our line of sided detector and i doubt that there is a pre-made node for it so we can create a new condition here and let's call it line of sight check and it is of type condition let's press next 
and let's add check target with capital T with line of sight detector. Again, the target was automatically assigned, select the detector and select it to be other mono behavior. And I'm going to select my line of sight detector type. And I'm going to create it the same way that we have created an action. If you save the script, a Visual Studio editor should open up showing you the line of sight check condition, a custom condition. The structure is very similar to a custom action, but instead of on update, we have is true method, which we want to override. We can delete on end and on start because we do not need those. Now remember that we need to check this target against our detector. So we are going to return detector dot value and we are going to call dot perform detection and we are going to pass inside the parentheses target dot value and this will return a game object or a null so we just want to check uh, exclamation mark equals null so if this is not equal to null we are going to return true if this is equal to null we are going to return false so we are not able to see the player again save the script and go back to your graph and here we should be able to select the branch on in the inspector we should be able to assign our custom condition so let's search for line offside check here it is and here it is assigned we need to assign the target so let's assign it by dragging it from our blackboard and with line of sight detector we need to assign this as a new line of sight detector now what happens if this is true and what happens if this is false well we can add a new bull flag so let's add it to our blackboard plus uh, the uh, basic types i think it is and we have boolean and let's call it target with capital t detected with capital d and let's accept this name the name is important because i'm using it in an exclamation mark trigger that shows an exclamation mark above the uh, enemy's head when the detection uh, has returned true and i'm using this target detected as a check against the blackboard variables so in our game if we look at above the head of the enemy the exclamation mark should show up okay so when true we are going to right click create or actually add and we are going to set variable value and let's select this node and we are going to assign the target detected to be simply true by toggling this on let's assign it to be the true result Control d to duplicate it and I'm going to just assign this to set to be uh, false when the branch and node returns false. Now let's move the inspector to see the second branch or second graph. And I'm going to select this abort if. And I don't want this condition. So right click, delete this. And I'm going to assign a new condition, variable condition, variable comparison. And I'm going to just select the target detected from the blackboard and assign it as a variable. And I'm going to check if this is equal to false. This way, if the target is invisible to the enemy, we are going to abort invoking the self navigates to target node. Just save your graph, select the enemy, and we need to assign this new line of sight detector. So let's assign this line of sight detector. If everything went well, we should see our gizmo changing color whenever the, uh, we enter the range detector, and we should see this green line of sight detector showing. So this is a raycast. And we are going to move out of the range and you can see that because we have hid behind this obstacle despite the fact that we are inside this range detector the enemy cannot really see us and since we gave the correct name to our variable the exclamation mark is showing and disappearing we have one issue though so let's select the player and let's move it in the scene view uh, in the range of the enemy and outside you can see that the exclamation mark is showing and it doesn't disappear. So what is going on? Well, if we select our enemy game object, we can see that the target detected is still true. If we open our graph and select debug mode and select the enemy, you can see that this all start has run this update range detector and it returns false. And we have no way to set the target detector's value here. Let's stop our project and go back to our graph we need to add this set target detected to be false above here. So let's move this uh, branch. Let's control D to duplicate this set target detected to false. And we want to connect it to this on start. And what we can do is this try in order. 
execute branches in order until one succeeds. So this means if we select this one and confirm, if our update range detector returns false, this try in order will run this node. In case this returns success, it will never run the set detected uh, target detected to be false, so this will work as expected. If we save our graph and press play and select the player in the uh, scene view and move it towards the enemy and back, you can see that the exclamation mark is disappearing and if we select our enemy in the hierarchy, we can see that the target detected is indeed false, so we have fixed our logic in our graph. In the next video, we will add patrolling logic to our game and discuss how to implement finite state machine. See you in the next video.